Hey guys, it's Lenny and welcome back to the shop. Well, this week we got a pretty cool little project for you. It's a shadow casting lamp, and you might not really know what a shadow casting lamp is. I didn't either uh, when I first researched this project. But what it does is you've got a nice ambient tone or a nice ambient light coming out of the front that kind of illuminates the room. But on the back, it's meant to sit kind of in front of a blank wall or, you know, an open wall. And it casts a shadow on that wall that can be anything you want it to be. And in this particular case, on this one, I used horses. I live in horse country. I love horses to death. And uh, so my shadow casting lamp is a horse. And on the front, I've got a basic horse silhouette. Just he's on all fours standing there. And on the back, uh, I've got another horse silhouette, but this time he's reared up on his hind legs, and, and that's the shadow that's going to be cast up on the wall. So here's a photo of what it looks like with the ambient lighting on. Pretty cool. So stick around. I'll show you how to make it. Okay, so here are the two silhouettes that I'm going to use for the shadow casting light. Now the front silhouette, which is the horse in just its normal stance, is going to be the front of the light. And that'll be what you see as it's sitting on your nightstand or end table, mantle, what have you. And what I want is for the back panel, this is what the light inside is going to cast this shadow on the wall uh, behind the light. And I want it to kind of look like the horse's inner spirit, its wild side. So you have this nice calm horse and then this ghostly shadow on the wall of the horse's inner side. And I'm going to give you an idea of what that looks like or what it will look like when everything is together. So now when we take our two images and we put them one over the other and put the light behind them, you can see what I'm going for. Okay, for the shadow casting box, I'm going to be using a 1x6 board. I'm going to start from a quarter inch from each edge and that's where my groove is going to be for my uh, silhouette panels and my glass and my groove is 5 sixteenths of an inch thick so I've got everything set up on the table saw we're going to make these two cuts the full length of the board on both sides and then we'll go ahead and cut our individual frame pieces out of this full length board Okay guys, I'm going to be using my miter gauge uh, to cut these 45 degrees in the frame pieces. Now, what I like to normally do before I make any cuts is to check to make sure the accuracy of my blade angle. Now on my particular table saw I have a little dial indicator here that says, you know, what degree my blade is tilted at. Uh, and even though it says it's at 45 degrees, I like to double check to make sure. So what I'm going to do is I've got a scrap piece of wood here. And I'm going to pass this through and cut, cut one edge at 45 degrees. I'm going to move the board down a little bit and I'm going to make a second cut. Now this short cutoff piece that I just cut off, I'm going to flip 180 degrees and put up against the remaining piece that I have left and check my gap. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. If there's any gap, then you can adjust your blade accordingly. If there is no gap, then you're good to go. Now with this small cutoff piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it 180 degrees. And then I'm going to pair up my cut. If there's any gap where this cut comes together, then adjust your blade accordingly. Okay, on these side pieces, 
I want the bottom to be able to be uh, removable so that I could change the silhouette panels if I ever wanted to. So what I do uh, is I've got a three quarter inch dado stack set up in the table saw and I'm going to cut a three quarter inch dado along the bottom side of both side panels. Okay, as you can see, I've got my silhouettes cut out, uh, the two patterns, the front and back. And now I need to take the pattern off, and I'm going to give you a little scroll sawing tip here. Uh, when it comes to removing patterns from your wood, one of the easiest ways uh, to do it is to take a little bit of mineral spirits on a paper towel. And basically, just wipe over the whole pattern. Just enough so it kind of soaks through the paper a little bit. And once you have that done, then just lift the pattern right off. Okay guys, as you saw earlier, the dados that I cut into the bottom of the side pieces, they are so that the bottom piece here can fit in there and I can put four screws on the bottom and that way if I ever want to take this panel off or the bottom piece off I can replace those silhouette panels if I ever want to change them out for something different or whatever and there's no screws going to be exposed or anything or shown on the sides everything is done from the bottom now when it comes to the bottom I went ahead and drilled a small hole for the electrical to go into and now the electrical, I'm going to use a lamp cord that I picked up at Lowe's for $5 and it's perfect because there's already a switch built into it so I can leave it plugged into the wall and there's a socket at the end and the socket takes a chandelier tip or a base bulb so I picked up an LED bulb uh, that has the same base and it'll fit in there and that's what I'm going to use to illuminate the box. Now on this Cord, there's a little bit of a locking clamp built into it not a little bit but there is a locking clamp built into it so what I've done is I went ahead and I drilled a hole that this whole setup can fit right through and then out of some scrap blocks of wood I went ahead and built a little riser and I also drilled a hole in the center of that riser but this hole is smaller so that this socket can go through and pressure fit and lock in and it's not going to come out and that way I can glue this to the bottom and that will be my riser on the inside and my lamp and everything so I'm going to get that glued in we'll get it attached and get our panels and everything in and then we'll talk about the glass and and how what I'm going to do with that okay while we're waiting for the glue to dry on the bottom I went ahead and put the back panel in the back silhouette along with the glass and this is going to be the side that reflects onto the wall. So I don't want to do anything with the glass. I just want clear glass on there. Now on the front piece of glass uh, that goes behind this silhouette, this is the front of the lamp. And this is the lamp that's going to be exposed to everybody and everybody's going to see it. And I don't want that bright LED. I don't want this light too bright. So what I want to do is I want to uh, diffuse the light. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take the front pane of glass and I've got some frosting paint and it's for frosting glass or plastic and I'm going to use that and I'm going to put a nice coat of frosting on there and it'll act as a diffuser and it'll give it just a nice white glow uh, you know as the light goes through it and everything so let's do that now.
Okay, I've added three coats to this, three light coats, and I just wanted to show you uh, the frosting and the difference. That'll diffuse that light really well and just give it a nice tone all the way through. Okay guys, real quick before we wrap up, I just wanted to make uh, show you a change that I made on the rear panel, the, the panel, the silhouette that's going to cast the shadow on the wall. As you can see, uh, in this one, I cut it out as, you know, with a scroll saw, and I cut out all the little details and lines and everything on this particular pattern. And I don't think that was the right thing to do. And another thing is, is the silhouette itself is so big, it take, I, I have it taking up the whole frame. As you can see in the light now, I made the, the silhouette of the horse smaller. Uh, and I didn't cut out any details. It's just the outline of the horse uh, to give a nice crisp shadow on the wall. And... As I said, no details on the inside, smaller, and as you can tell from here, I raised it up a little bit so the actual image was just a little bit above or, you know, around the same height as the light source, so it casts a nice shadow. Um, I'm not going to throw this away, of course. I'm going to keep it for another project or put it in a frame, do something with it, but when it comes to making these silhouettes, just the outlines, uh, I think you're going to really... Uh, notice a big difference so just remember that if you decide to make one of your own uh, another thing that makes a big difference is that LED light that I had on the inside was just way too bright um, and it was just blowing out the shadow on the wall so I went ahead and I, I got a little smaller light a little less wattage and everything so now I have a both a really nice subtle tone coming out of the front and a really nice tone coming out of the back and, and a nice clean shadow. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoy the project and try to make one of your own. I think if you stick with the you know silhouettes and don't go into a lot of detail with them and just the outline and the silhouettes, I think you'll, you'll really uh, have good results. And like I said, that LED was way too bright. Lowering the wattage in a, a little dimmer bulb uh, really made all the difference in the world. And if you guys happen to decide to make one, post it over at the Simple Design of Ocala Facebook page. I'd love to see it. And that's facebook.com forward slash Simple Design of Ocala. Until next week, guys. See you soon.